So what I've got here is a Commodore 64 SCART cable that I got for a few pounds, thinking this was gonna give me nice video output, but actually it gives me pretty crappy video output because this has got, this has only got five pins in it. This is actually sending composite out to the Commodore 64. And the reason I know that is because uh, they've got eight pins on the output on the C64, and the center pin is the uh, chroma signal for chroma luma. So this can't be sending chroma luma, um, because it doesn't have the correct pins in. The reason they sell these particular ones is because these five pin ones work on the very old Commodore 64s that didn't have eight pins, and they also work on the VIC-20 and all the other um, computers that were prior to the Commodore 64. So what I'm gonna do, I've bought a couple of these. So that's the actual eight pin connector. I need to completely rewire the internal of that and rewire, well, get rid of that and then wire it onto that and get a really nice video out from the Commodore 64 because I'll show you that the composite out uh, is producing pretty, it's you know, it's better than some video, but it, it seems to be quite distorted. So I think the problem is that, is that we should be using a proper chroma luma signal, which is what the, the probably the best signal you can get out of a Commodore 64. It doesn't actually produce RGB instead of this composite one. So I'll plug this in and then we can see how crappy this looks and then we'll fix it for this one and see if it improved. Here's the Commodore 64 propped up on an Amazon box and if we take a look at the picture this is the picture with the composite SCART cable so if we zoom right in on say this Commodore here you'll see that the M's are super smudgy. If we swap that out for Chroma Luma we'll see what that does to the picture but I think that doesn't look so great but maybe that's too, as good as can be expected from composite out. So hopefully we'll get a way better picture with the Chroma Luma, because I believe these C64Cs actually give quite a good video output. Composite's just not as good as those two separate signals. Pop this connector off, I think. Oh, there we go. It is quite similar to the other one that I've got. Got some hot glue on there, nice. So I'm probably just gonna cut this one off anyway. And then I need to find a wiring diagram for the eight pin one. So, let's just pop out. Oop, there we go. So we've got three pairs of cables. So is that enough to get the signals that I need? Chroma Luma ground and audio, I think. So let me check that. It turns out this blog that I found pretty much straight away has got all the stuff on it. This person's actually built a SCART cable of their own and they've got the wiring diagram here. So we've got pins one and four. So that's Luma and you can switch it over to composite. We need one pin for that. Pin two is ground. So that's two pins. Uh, audio out, that's three. Uh, we don't need the audio input. We don't need the composite video. Uh, Chroma, that's four and the other two not connected and five volts or not connected. So we only actually need one, two, three, we only actually need four cables in here and we've got this optional 300 ohm resistor that maybe we should put in depending on whether we need that, I'm not sure. So yeah, but you can see that that center pin, pin six, uh, pin six chroma is just not on my cable. Neither is pin seven for, oh, not connected for stereo pin setup. So yeah, you can see that this just wasn't just didn't have that center pin. I think that was the only thing I really needed. Yeah, so we should probably just wire this, wire this the way it's done on this one. Uh, if we get the right pins on the SCART cable, uh, it should be good to go. I don't need to unsolder any of this audio stuff because this is all fine. Audio left, right, and the two audio grounds are connected. Um, so then I can just keep that these two cables for audio and I can use these for the Chroma and Luma. So I can actually leave that one, this yellow one, um, uh, in as well because that one is actually the Luma signal. So I could leave the yellow one as the Luma signal. Um, and I can just desolder this, stick it onto that pin, and that will be my Chroma, I believe, 17. Oh no, that'll be the ground. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably take that and move it to Chroma, which is. 15, so it's that pin there. And then all we've got to do is connect this, this ground here to this pin here, and that'll be the video ground. So I'll have an audio ground and a video ground. Um, and then I've just got to solder the other end. So that should be okay, I think. I don't actually have 
any like helping hands or clips to hold this in. So I'm just going to use some tape and I'm going to stick it to this famous grass whiskey glass and I'll get that to hold it in place for me. <laughs> it's just pretty, uh, it's just how it's going to be done, <laughs> I think. So hopefully if I just stick this to this shot glass, maybe the sticky won't melt. Perfect. The stupidest thing you'll see today. Famous grass glass with a SCART connector on it. It doesn't seem to be melting. Maybe I need a bigger tip. So I'm just going to this to pin 15. I don't know how I'm supposed to get that to hold in. <laughs> Make sure my glass doesn't roll away. Hopefully that's all right even though I made an absolute botch of it, thanks to my shot glass method. <clears throat> but it is working. Yep. Little bodge wire. I need to bodge this pin here. I need to the audio ground so that they're both the same ground. So in theory, if I don't melt the connector again, I could get this to work. But who knows? In fact, I did do a little bit of damage to the uh, to the yellow wire. Maybe more sticky tapes in order. So that pin is the video ground. Let's see if I can do this without melting the connector again, like an idiot. Trouble is the shot glass. The shot glass method. If you're going to try it yourself, <laughs> it does slide about a bit. <laughs> Could do with some rubber feet on the shot glass. Oh, it could be a, this is a terrible job I'm doing. Amateur. So what are you going to do? Oh, and this other cable is almost exactly where I want it to be. And I say almost, it being in the wrong place. All right, might be time for more sticky tape. It's because if I put any pressure on this at all, the sharp glass will just slide away. Oh God, what an idiot. Maybe I'm going to abandon the shot glass. There we go. Maybe we'll have some better luck now. Well, looks like it works. It's a bit of a botch, but it works. And I've kind of like screwed up some of these pins. There we go. That is horrific. That's that end done. This is probably gonna look horrific at the end. And then this end is now all wired up wrong. That would be the next job, is to change this out. So I've stripped all the hot glue off those, now back to just the wires as they were. So this time, instead of the famous grass glass, I'm going to use this piece of polystyrene. Hopefully I can solder this one in a bit better without melting it. So I should just have to wire these into the correct one, and should be good to go. So I've bound the left and right audio together because the Commodore's mono, bound the ground together, and I've just left the other two free because they're going to be my chroma loom signal. So I've just got to solder those in now. There we go. And in theory, as long as these unshielded wires don't touch each other, this is technically fixed. I'll buzz it out with the multimeter and make sure I did it correctly. So pin one is Luma. And this should be left audio. And it's also right audio. Check. Audio ground. That's audio ground. And that's also video ground. Yeah. And the chroma signal should be the center pin. There we go. It's all good. So all I've got to do now is stick this in and see if it works. Time to give it a go. Moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. There it is. And you know what? It doesn't actually look much better. Actually, it's still pretty pretty blurry. So that's that's unusual. I don't know if there's a problem with this Commodore 64 or something. It's about the same as before. Even the Ready's got a big smudge on it there. I don't know if you can see that. That's not like an artifact of the uh, of the camera. There is like a smudge next to the R. There's something really weird going on here. 
I don't think there's been any improvement. Yeah, so that's not a camera artifact. That's that's how it looks to me. It looks really smudged. So the Chrome Luma hasn't fixed it. So let's at least see if I've got the sound working. Well, looks like the sound works then. Again, it's hard to see, but you can... I'm not sure that it's supposed to look like this. I think it's the upscaling on the TV, but... If you look at these, this text here, it's all, like, messed up. So I wonder if it's something to do with this LG TV. I mean, it definitely looks... It looks reasonable until you see a couple of, like... Until you see that black and white text next to each other, and it's all screwed up. Let's just zoom in on this piece of text, because I've got a... I think actually the chroma luma signal is better, but it's still messed up, and I think it might be. Uh, could that be upscaling doing that? It just seems really odd that it's got like this, this ghosted text. It could be the upscaler. Maybe it's trying to smooth it. I don't. I've, I've looked through the TV settings. It doesn't appear to be any way to turn it off. It's definitely quite clear. In fact, it does look really clear there. Yeah, that looks fine to me. That looks It looks wrong on the camera there, but actually looks fine. So the RF modulator in this C64 is modded so that the RF out now actually produces composite. So I could actually just plug the composite in and just compare it to that. This is going to be quite hard to see, but this is now the composite out from the Commodore 64, but going through a HDMI upscaler because I don't have a composite input on this. And it's weird because it, it kind of doesn't look as smudgy as the other one, but I think, that, I think the upscaler is kind of like, it looks more like blurry everywhere. So I, th I think the upscaler is just slightly anti-aliasing everything. It certainly doesn't look super bad. So the, the Chroma Luma output looks crisper, but then it's got this weird, like, these weird artifacts all over it. So if you look at that text there, and then I'll swap it out for the Chroma Luma, and we'll see what that looks like. So that's the Chroma Luma version, and you can see that's way sharper, but it does have these weird kind of artifacts. It definitely looks a lot sharper when I'm looking at it on the screen. So I'd say the Chroma Luma is definitely a lot better than the composite, but certainly I've got some weird things going on, possibly just with my TV with the upscaling. But certainly a massive improvement over composite. So let's try it back on the main screen with the Commodore logo. I'll go back to the main screen for on Chroma Luma. So that's the word Commodore on the Chroma Luma output, and you can see like the M's just look wrong. I think this has got to be the television doing something very odd. I'll switch it to the composite out. Oh, so there you go. So that, that's the composite out. There's the Commodore. And it's still got the... It's weird. It doesn't have the same artifacts, but it looks a lot worse. Um, to my eyes, anyway. It probably isn't picking up on the camera. But it's definitely a lot more blurry. The colours are completely different as well. So, yeah. So the composite out is just not that great. But it doesn't seem to have, like, the artifacts that were on the R don't seem to be there and the M's on the Commodore don't look so bad so I think yeah I, th I think this LG TV is screwing up the picture and, and it doesn't appear to be anything in the settings that can let me change that there we go and that's the same thing on the Chroma Luma output which to my eyes here looks way better but has this weird thing going on that's probably not that apparent on the camera but the colors are much more vibrant the blues are much brighter and the bits that are working are definitely crisper. So there it is, uh, Chrome and Luma output converted. And it's better, but it's not as better as I wanted it to be better.